The 14th annual ONTV Food Drive kicked off on Monday, February 5th and came to an end on Friday, February 9th. As always, the Lake Orion community really came together to help make the food drive the most successful ever. The Chamber of Commerce looked back on a busy 2023 and looked ahead to the future during a member appreciation breakfast at the Orion Center. 200 avid golfers descended upon downtown Lake Orion for the 10th annual Ice Golf Cup Challenge, benefiting a great cause. And the Orion Art Center launched a brand new event that encouraged artists to create a masterpiece in 24 hours. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Following the holidays, the shelves at the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry tend to get a little light, at least until the post office food drive arrives in May. That's why ONTV has chosen February to host its annual food drive here at the studio. What started out as a one-day event has evolved into a week-long effort that focuses on monetary donations. Uh, welcome to the 14th annual ONTV Food Drive live in the ONTV studio here at the Orient Center. ONTV's 14th annual food drive got underway on Monday, February 5th, as Ian Locke and Matt Pfeiffer went live on the air at noon. Viewers were encouraged to visit the ONTV website to make a cash donation or to come to the Orient Center to help fill the production truck with food donations. The 14th annual, already 14 years of the ONTV food drive for fish, uh, it came about, of, of course, 14 years ago when the staff sat around and said, hey, what can we do in the winter months to get our uh, volunteers here at ONTV involved and showcase in a way the technology we have at the studio and we partnered up with Oxford Orient Fish right away and they said oh by the way we have a huge need this time of year and um, we decided hey let's do something telethon style uh, live TV and we did it for one day and it worked out really well and it has ballooned into a community event that uh, people are, you know, residents and uh, elected officials around the area come to expect this time of year. So it's now a true community event. ONTV went live for five days in a row this from noon great. until 2 p.m. with interviews and entertainment and special guests who dropped in to make a donation. We have Bill and Pam. Bill and Pam uh, with uh, Madison Heights Plumbing and heating supply. And uh, I'm gonna open this check, uh, if you don't mind right oh. now. So this is, um, this is from Madison Heights Plumbing and, uh, and Heating Supply. And um, uh, you guys have been incredibly generous in everything that pops up in the community. And um, so uh, I appreciate it. And it's, uh, well, this would be a biggest donation uh, this year. Uh, and I, I think it was the biggest donation last year because you guys did this for us last year. Well, I don't know if we need to show it there. $5,000. $5,000. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. Please, I, I haven't met your sister. Please pass along to her the thank you, your kids, your family. You guys are great Lake Orion residents. Uh, we, uh, um, you know, I uh, get to see each other around town a bit, and uh, and you're involved in some other service in the community with the Eagles. Um, and you guys are the epitome of what it means to be um, to be a good citizen and uh, and good people. And I am so thankful for you. Well, we like to support our community, that's for sure. And uh, normally we sponsor one shelf. This year we decided to continue with two shelves. So the donation is needed. Our community, you know, we love supporting them. And uh, it's just what we do. So this covers uh, two shelves for 12 months for a total of $2,400 that goes to the total. Uh, overwhelming um, gift. Amazing. It's an absolutely overwhelming gift, yeah. I, I'm, it literally renders me speechless, which my husband can attest does not happen very often. As the food drive wound down on Friday, last minute cash and food donations made their way to the Owen TV studio. When Ian Locke wrapped up the final live broadcast of the week, it was revealed that the 14th annual ONTV TV Food Drive raked in over $16,000 to feed hungry families in the Oxford Orient area. 
Immediately after the food drive signed off, a representative from Broadway Dance arrived to help fill the ONTV production truck with a massive donation of food. The ONTV staff drove the van to the food pantry in Oxford to deliver its payload and help keep those shelves stocked for the next few months. As always here in Oxford and Orion, we know when um, organizations like ours or other nonprofits say, hey, we need to uh, have a call to action to help those in need, the community always shows up. It always shows up. It has for 14 years for us here at the uh, ONTV Food Drive, and um, we know they will show up again. We'll be back for the 15th year uh, next year, and, and we know the community comes out. It's just overwhelming how uh, the response has spread now uh, up to Oxford. So now we're trying to incorporate Oxford uh, 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 help with donations uh, in the future. Just because the ONTV food drive has come to an end, that doesn't mean our work is done. ONTV is a food drop-off point all year long, and the food pantry continues to need your help. To make a donation or to volunteer your time, visit OxfordOrionFish.org. 2023 was a busy year for the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce, especially considering it was Joyce Donaldson's first year as president and CEO. On the morning of Wednesday, January 31st, 125 members of the Orion Chamber gathered at the Orion Center for an annual meeting and member appreciation breakfast. It was an opportunity to look back at all the Chamber's accomplishments in 2023, including 18 ribbon cutting ceremonies and numerous special events, and to look ahead to a future that may include some major changes. Well, today's event um, is to kind of brag about what the Chamber did in 2023 and then, of course, look forward to the future. So we had 125 members that came out to hear us. So I was super excited about, about the members coming out and wanting to hear what we did and then what, what's in the future. What I hope to accomplish today is to see everything that a two-person staff can do with a limited budget. As you know, we're a nonprofit 501c6 with a budget of less than 200,000, and we're super excited that we're able to do all these things with that limited budget, limited staff, and very limited resources. Speaking at the event was Orion Township Supervisor Chris Burnett, who shared the latest township news, including the township's purchase of Great Lakes Athletic Club. Chamber members also got an update on the progress being made at the GM Orient Assembly Plant as it expands its footprint in Orient Township. The message is there's, there's great things to come here. The, the Orient Assembly Plant is going to be growing in extreme fashion in the future. It's doubling in size and that's going to be a really positive impact on the Orient community. We're slated to launch again late 2025 at Orient Assembly. Construction on site is on been it started a year ago. It's going on now. It's going to continue to go on for probably the next 18 months. And then during this course of the in during this year, you're going to see the construction around the roads of Giddings and Silverbell Road being re resurfaced to help support the needs of the plant in the future. The chamber has a full slate of events and networking opportunities planned for 2024. For more information, you can call 248-693-6300 or visit orientareachamber.com. During the winter months, Lake Orion turns into a sleepy little town, but recently the downtown area was bustling with activity despite the cold weather. On the morning of Saturday, February 3rd, more than 200 avid golfers braved the frigid temps and descended on downtown Lake Orion for the 10th annual Ice Golf Cup Challenge. Things kicked off at Wine Social with golfers moving outside for last minute instructions. At promptly 10 a.m., the scramble began with teams making their way to 18 holes set up in and around downtown Lake Orion, all adopted by a local business. This is called ice golf. Historically, it was played on the lake. With climate change, that hasn't been an option for a long, long time. So, but we still um, have two holes that are on the beach by the lake. Um, and then Trevacorp has a great hole um, that is near the lake. And then the rest of these are really in and around our area of businesses. So in addition to everything else, our local business community is supporting this effort. Um, people get to play, it's kind of like putt-putt, in and around um, the businesses and it's just everybody has a lot of fun. The event raised more than $20,000 for the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club's charitable efforts in the community.
Our primary project is local beds for kids. Believe it or not, we have kids who do not have a bed to sleep on. And so if we find out about that, they come to Rotary and we fix that literally in a day. Um, in addition to that, we are in partnership with the Orion Township and the Orion Historical Society. We are rehabbing the historic Haworth School, and eventually that will be a facility where our uh, kids can go and see what it was like to see or to be in a one-room schoolhouse back at the turn of the last century, and the and obviously the public can do that too. Um, in addition to that, Rotary gets requests pretty much every single month for different local needs and projects. And the need in our community um, continues to be huge, and we are an incredibly responsive group of people. This event today raised funds that we then spend the whole year disseminating around um, our community. What can you say to these people coming out cold February morning to do this? Everybody who plays, every Rotarian, everybody who volunteers, these are people who have huge hearts and they are um, wired to give back to other people and so God bless them and, and just um, you know, a huge thank you to everybody for supporting this event. The Rotary Club meets on Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. at Lake Oregon United Methodist Church and the third Thursday of each month at 6.30 p.m. at Oak Soda. For more information, search for Lake Orion Rotary on Facebook or you can call Haney Farm Bureau at 248-464-5219. Throughout the year, the Orion Art Center caters to the creative community with exhibits, events, and classes. Recently, the Art Center board approved a brand new event that attracted artists from in and around the Orient area. And ONTV's Joe Johnson has all the details. On the morning of Saturday, February 3rd, more than 30 artists gathered at the Moose Tree Preserve, also known as the Orient Art Center Studio, for the first ever 24-hour art challenge. Local artists Eugene Clark and Matt Faulkner pitched the idea to the Orient Art Center board, and to their surprise, it was approved. Participants arrived at 10 a.m. on Saturday and given the rules, each artist was assigned an image and a word that had to be incorporated into an 11 by 14 travel poster created using traditional media or rendered digitally. People are creating a, an original piece that's based off of prompts that Matt and I have set up uh, ahead of time. So the prompts lead them into uh, what we call a thought tree, a word tree, and they, they start to create a matrix of ideas which are going to then uh, expand into a world, and that world is a fictional world. So any story that people can recognize like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, those are in, essentially those types of worlds that a human being like myself or yourself had to we, they had to literally say okay who are all the characters where do they live you know how do they eat what do they dress you know what are their professions you know all those things so this essentially is giving people a chance in 24 hours to not only answer all that but create one piece of work that's going to feature all those things the following morning, the artists returned to the art studio to put the finishing touches on their work before the 10.30 a.m. deadline. Then each piece was displayed on an easel, laptop, or tablet for judging. I'm impressed, really. I'm 24 hours. Even yesterday, some of the people, when they were introducing themselves, they'd say, well, I'm not an artist yet. I'm still in high school, and clearly this work is work of all artists, so I'm really impressed with it. When the deadline passed, Clark and Faulkner began the unenviable task of judging the submitted works. They disappeared into a separate room to begin deliberations, then returned with the big announcement. Named winner of the inaugural 24-hour art challenge was Adriana Racine of Oxford, whose submission, Millstone City, netted her the $1,000 grand prize. She told us her grandmother, Judy, encouraged her to enter the contest and even paid the entry fee. So I did a mixed media piece, mostly watercolor, and uh, we were given two things as far as a word and an image goes, and I got a mortar pestle, which is a stone bowl used for thousands of years, um, used to grind grains, make powders, paste, whatever, and then my word was feckless, and I had never heard that word before, so I had to Google that dictionary. <laughs> And uh, it means spiritless or useless. So I was like, I don't even know. I worked on my concept for like three hours just trying to figure out like what I even wanted to have an idea about. 
So I made a, a culture where people, they take delight in grinding down their own moral values. So I wanted to create a piece with just lots of dimension and drama, and uh, I was really articulate with how I placed everything. My sketch was like, took three hours alone, so, which was really frustrating, and it was, it was a roller coaster of emotions, but I had a lot of fun with the piece. The winning piece to me um, was, the, the faces in that were um, just transplendent to me. I, uh, I, I couldn't take my eyes off of it, you know. Um, the design of it, the idea, was just uh, really potent. And the rendering, I mean, like I was saying before, it was both the idea and the rendering. So, but the, the uh, like the pathos of the characters was really, came out through the rendering, and that, that was important to me. There are so many communities that don't have an art center. Uh, I live in Oxford, which is very close, and we do not have an art center. So anyone that wants to do anything creative, like the programs that they offer, uh, we have to travel to Lake Orion, which is not a big deal for us, but there are a lot of outlying communities around Lake Orion uh, that do the same thing. So in this room today, we have people from a lot of outlying communities. To this community, Orient Art Center provides an opportunity for people right in their own hometown to be creative, to learn new processes of art making, or to just be exposed. Um, they put on the Dragon on the Lake Festival, which is a big fundraiser. That in and of itself is a way for people to dive in to how uh, an art center can really impact a community. The Orion Art Center is hoping to display all the submitted pieces for an upcoming exhibition. Meanwhile, the Art Center is teaming up with the Orion Township Public Library for the second annual Art of Storytelling exhibition. Participants are challenged to create a work of art based on the book Kitchens of the Great Midwest. The deadline to register is February 29th, and winners will be announced at a reception on March 7th. For more information or to register, visit orionartcenter.org. At the Moose Tree Preserve, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. On January 12th, the Lake Orion Police Department was looking forward to the first Kids and Cops program to take place in the brand new Blanche Sims Elementary School. But Mother Nature had other ideas and the event was canceled due to a snowstorm. One month later, the LOPD gave it another go and this time the event was a huge success. On the evening of Friday, February 9th, more than 200 students invaded Blanche Sims Elementary School for the first Kids and Cups event at the new school. Students played games in the gymnasium and media center, and the Lake Orion Police Department provided food and refreshments courtesy of Sick Pizza in Oxford. Uh, it is fantastic to have all these kids in the building uh, after the school day. The kids just love to be here. And then, of course, the partnership that we have with our police officers, uh, it's just one of the many things that makes Blanchin special. Uh, the police department is such a big part of our school. Uh, they're here virtually every single day, uh, and all year they're always asking, when's the next Kids and Cops? When's the next Kids and Cops? Uh, because they love being here at night and just be, being able to have fun, and a lot of our teachers come up uh, with their kids, and it just makes us feel uh, a lot more like a family. First, it gives back to our community and our kids. That's what it's all about. This is so that these kids can at least see us here as just a normal person, not as a police officer, but as their friend. You know, so we can play with them. If they have something maybe they want to discuss with us, they can. You know, just to make everything friendly. The Kids and Cops program was created in 1996 in conjunction with the Orion Oxford Boys and Girls Club of Southeast Michigan. Fundraisers throughout the year help keep the program going possible through basically we get donations through the year on um, our biggest donations is basically when we have the car show in August uh, most of those proceeds that we collect there from donations come here to support this program for the winter. Since Blanche Sims Elementary School is the only school within the borders of the village the program is limited to students who attend the school. The next Kids and Cops event is scheduled to take place on Friday March 8th. And finally, we here at ONTV would like to express our condolences to the family and friends of Marion Janopoulos. The former LOCS superintendent passed away on January 2nd at the age of 80 following a battle with lung cancer, which she won, but it was ultimately pneumonia that took her life. She retired as superintendent in 2020. Here is a clip from the newscast that aired following her retirement. 
On Wednesday, June 24th, Superintendent Janopoulos attended her final Lake Orion School Board meeting, again via Zoom, as her colleagues wished her well. Janopoulos capped off a 50-year career in education, beginning a stint as superintendent of Oxford Schools in 1993. After retiring in 2000, she was selected to act as interim superintendent with Lake Orion Community Schools to fill in for outgoing superintendent Ken Gutman in 2010. In early 2011, the board voted to extend her contract. Over the next decade, Janopoulos became quite popular with faculty and students alike. In 2019, she appeared in the homecoming parade as homecoming queen. Mrs. Janopoulos is currently wearing the 2019 Homecoming Queen crown and sash, which we will be giving to our newly appointed queen on Friday night. But the one thing I do want to especially thank Heidi, uh, when I had cancer four years ago, she is the one who stepped up and really worked and really took over and made a huge difference. And I'm most appreciative, Heidi. In closing, I want to thank the board, this board and previous boards that I've worked with for your support throughout these past years. Uh, some years have been more difficult than others, but I'm really grateful uh, to have been allowed to provide the leadership in this school district uh, that has really, in my mind, I am most proud of. I think we have done some amazing things, and it's as a result of the support of the school board and those who have come before you. So with that, I say goodbye and no 783 board members meetings. Good luck, Rick. Thank you. Such sad news. She will be missed by the entire Lake Orion community. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News, the first of 2024. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching. Thank you.